14 podcast presented by Sports Interaction, your homegrown sports book. Bet local today with Sports Interaction. And we won another series back to back, back to back. It didn't start out good. It did not start out good, but they got the job finished, man. How are you feeling, Abe? I feel I am so happy to have back to back series wins. Back to 500. Yeah. It's so crazy how the last game of the series dictates how you feel because this Friday night was. Nothing short of a disaster for the baseball team that we cheer for and cover. So bad. Yeah. So bad. And you like, go back you go back to back losses and it's okay, this team is horrible. Not that they played great baseball the next two days. Um, they just kept them off the board and everything seemed to be okay. The strength of the team, which is the pitching. Won them kind of two games in a, like a couple five, good innings. Five That's runs really kind of all yeah. Is not an like not that many runs. Yeah. So it is bad. Five runs is good when it's more than what the other team has. Yeah. But still, this was not an offensive outburst of any sorts in the last. We have yet to really see that. We've seen like one offensive outburst game, which was the Sunday against the Rays, I believe. Uh, other than that, like a lot of the wins haven't really been like satis- like satisfaction wins where it's like beat the fucking breaks off a team, right? No, it's we didn't hit a huge home run. Sorry, Vault Don Varsho hit a huge home run yesterday, but let's put up nine. The Brewers yeah. went what five straight games scoring seven plus runs. I don't know how I'd react if the Jays did that. But I don't think that can happen this year. I don't think it makes sense. I just don't think it'll it'll happen. Um, that would be that would be awesome, but I, I'd be very shocked if that happened. We got we got into the ballpark. It was Jock Night Friday. Um, but there's definitely the changes are interesting. I'll say that. Yeah, Jock Knight rocked, and uh, shout out to our guy Ricky. Uh, Blake was there. Why everyone? Like, if you if if you're a Jock on Blue Jays Twitter, you were there. Uh, it was cool to see all the guys for sure. And I, uh, put, I love those guys with my whole heart. They me they mean everything to me. They mean so. the world to me. And I'm gonna give a special shout out to Jr. because uh, Jay's retro was as advertised. Uh, <laughs> one of the best to ever do it. I would die for Jr. I'm I'm the godfather of one of his children, so um, he's just the best. We but... have to talk about the Doc move, though. Yeah. So Doctor Internet. So we always think like why Jay is going to show up to the games late and all that, right? Which he does. He showed up late, but it wasn't really late. Doctor Internet shows up in the second inning with two full blown Domino's pizzas <laughs> to the game. Walking up the aisle with Domino's pizzas at a Blue Jays game. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that. I was like, what are you doing, dude? I didn't even know you could bring food. I, I knew you could bring food, but I didn't know you could bring in full-blown pizzas to the ba- to the baseball game. Yeah, so Rodgers isn't going to lie, or the Blue Jays aren't going to like this, but if you want to bring a full pizza into a Blue Jays game, it's allowed. It's the most Doc move ever. He usually has a bag full of snacks for everyone, and he, want, he wanted to keep the two full sections fed. Uh, yes. That guy, that guy rocks. Yeah, he was putting on a show for the people in our uh, in our in our uh, section. But I wanted to d- discuss the renovations. Um, what did you think of them? Because I I think it looks cool. I'm still trying to adjust to how big the right like the right foul territory fence is. It's it's just a weird adjustment. I'm used to like guys being able to potentially uh, jump into the stands and catch a ball uh, if it goes to the right side now. Now it's pretty much just banged. Like, if there's any foul ball to the right side, if I'm a right fielder or a left fielder, I'm not even uh, going for the baseball. So they've completely like, taken the fans out of fan interference. Like, there's nowhere on the field that can happen now, right? Yeah. Which kind of sucks. Um, kind of fun. There's some, um, I think there were some pricing issues, quite possibly. I'm not smart with this type of stuff, but yeah. d- in the corners, there was no one there for any single game that was played all weekend. No. Maybe opening day. So that tells you that the price of those tickets were so bad that no one was sitting there. It's yeah. it's in the corners close to the foul pole, but you're um you're not in the outfield, those seats. So they look towards yeah, yeah, the corner. The corner the corner seats. But I will Avery. I price looked at it, obviously, just to kind of see. You could sit either there for a hundred dollars or in the two hundred level behind home plate for a hundred dollars. Do you genuinely think people will rather sit in the corner and not be able to see the strike zone, 
see what's going on. They probably could Kinda barely see the- Dalton Varsho's home run if you were sitting in right. Yeah, so I think they have to adjust that pricing, like you said, because those seats, no disrespect, are fucking terrible. I've sat there before. Like, you can't see shit. Yeah. You don't really know if it's a strike or a ball at the plate. You don't really know what's going on. You're ki- you can kind of see the Jumbotron, but not really. Like... It's literally those seats being the same price as like section 231 blows my mind. It yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. So maybe price those better. And there was a lot, there's tons of deals on the resale market um, that were way cheaper than what they were on Ticketmaster. And that tells you that they're not like people are losing money on the resale, which I don't, I don't feel bad about. Like if you no. buy, if you buy tickets and then resell them for more every time, I'm sure someone could have a job doing that. Um, so it's kind of scummy, but if you didn't get your tickets in advance, you have to pay the price with whatever is available to you. Yeah. So I don't feel totally horrible. But again, you get some deals on Seeky because that's who's reselling the tickets. And I, so I got to sit, we got moved down. Uh, one of the people we were with, he Charles tried, Lungerman. Yeah, he was re, re, trying to resell his tickets. He couldn't sit in his seats because he had more friends. So they were right on the dugout. He's like, I'm going to splurge on seats. And he couldn't sell them after. Yeah. So I said, okay, no one sells them by the second inning. Let me know. I, like, I'd love to sit there. I went with my girlfriend. Of course, she loves the fancy. Like, she loves sitting that close. And I just couldn't think. Like, nothing was finished down below. Because we, we go through the premium entrance where um, they have, like, marble floors there. Really? Yeah. You And then you go downstairs. Not Nothing's really done. There's, like, a concierge. It's, it's kind of nuts. The only thing that's done is like a nice bathroom and there's a bunch of stuff just off. There's the bar that's supposed to be there. Isn't there yet. Um, so par- people got absolutely sewered. They paid the premium ticket pricing, which is what it's going to cost once it's complete, but didn't get that experience. I think we knew, we knew that the, if you had done any bit of research, um, uh, yeah, you knew apparently there's going to down there, there's going to be a, view of the blue jays hitting tunnel whoa Uh, yeah so that'll be that'll be pretty cool when it's done but the bar that was supposed to be down there wasn't done the only thing was the bathroom you got some free food and snacks during it um there was something on it's like the leaf games where they give you the little brochure of what you can order there's a scanner on the back you just text in what you want to drink they come bring it to you pay for it on that so Hmm. pretty cool but i i could i hate how much cement there is pretty much taking up what could be good seats as well. The other yes. Rogers Center was not perfect. Certainly not. But it was our it was our little Rogers Center. The but seats it's like, those face- are so, those are some of the best seats in the house that are just taken up by so much cement and that's what I I couldn't stop thinking about like the sights of it pretty ugly cuz where we sat before was kind of the same seats where we were over the first base dugout just up 18 rows or up 20ish. Yeah. Rows. And we just had this big cement block kind of in front of us that looked ugly. That is weird. Ugly gray. So there is good. I can't afford those tickets by myself to go to every game. That's not what we are. I was lucky to get upgraded that way. We will do it. Do one as well. I want you to to figure it out. See what it's like so you can have your own opinions of it. Well, we're going to we're going to expense tickets behind home plate. We're going to be on TV for one of the games. We will do that. I will. Because that'll be awesome. Those are big seats. Well, that's just free advertisement. Yeah. The new seats in the 100 level are big, and they're they're fantastic. The cup holders are a nice touch. You don't have to put them at your feet. And when you stand up and people go by you in your aisle, you don't have to worry about them being knocked off. So that was a nice thing, too. But I think there's some still to be designed. I hated how much cement was just in the way. Pretty we got to talk about the story because, listen, maybe we could find lo- I could find love here. Uh, when we went to go see Schneider's parents... Uh, this girl, I don't know if she works for, uh, like it's the dance team on the blue Jays, but she came up to me and you and said, Johnny Avery, like, I love you guys. And I, I literally five minutes after I looked at you, I said, I think I fucking love that. Girl. <laughs> uh, I would love to find who that is. I know, obviously she don't have a boyfriend. Cause I, I, we had a little instance on Friday's game when I was at the gate and the girl came up to me and said, she was waiting at gate 14 for me to show up yesterday and i never showed up and then her boyfriend walks in right behind her and i'm like oh what's up man shook his head i was like (laughs) one of those situations uh but yeah no it's uh young love man i i will say the reception that we got friday and saturday was insane and uh 
it's just it's truly incredible to see the amount of gate 14 riders we have out there so uh we do appreciate you guys but the games on friday i'm not even really going to go into it that much where are you out with kevin gossman Abe? like every every time i think he gets hit hard he has a tell um uh the yankees game because i haven't i haven't been able to watch it. i'm gonna sit through some of the some of the watching when you're when we're there i it's hard for me to watch and take things yeah. in that yeah. way um that's not how my, my brain doesn't work well that way i need to go back and watch kind of pitch by pitch sequence by sequence that's fair up. uh the te- i always think there's a tell with him because he's so good but the velo was back up it seemed like uh they were swinging at everything um and the rockies team like when those guys were swinging it was like brenton doyle hitting doubles in the gap brennan rogers who hasn't been good in a while hitting doubles in the gap as like oh man what is going on here but you have like talented people like ryan mcmahon hitting home runs just because the team sucks doesn't mean there's not good players on those teams as well yeah uh, so that's kind of where i was at i want to go and look at really what happened it seemed like he threw a lot of sliders which was something different to me the velo was up again yeah and every time i think he he gets hit hard they have a tell i was through the grapevine i'm not going to reveal any sources that there was a tell um, when there's runners on second base for him, it's they look at his forearm muscles to know which pitch is coming because the guess is you're going to get one of two pitches, right? And yeah, when you when you get the split in it, obviously you can tell the for, forearm muscles are going to flex. Like put spread your fingers apart and put a baseball between it. Your forearm muscles are going to flex differently than you're way more relaxed when you're just holding a four seam fastball. So I think that's a tell with runners on second. He's so good. He doesn't get runners on second a lot of the time. So yeah, you can't blame a start on that. Like that's, I think his second base tell when they know what pitch is coming. Um, and then the twins thought they had something on him before. I don't know if the rock, I would be shocked if the Rockies had something on him, a team he's going to face maybe once a year. And out of all the teams. Yeah. That they're going to scout the hardest. Um, maybe there's, do you think they share scouting reports on other guys? Cause they did that in college, right? Some of the... I don't assist- think they do that, Abe. No. Yeah, so, yeah, that's my thing, too. I don't think they do either. Because college, the assistant coaches would call each other for scouting reports on guys, right? Did they do that for you? Yeah, sometimes they would. I would say, though, the Kevin Gossman stuff, I'm not worried about him. And the good thing is, is this rotation is so good that you can have guys like Jose Brios who look exactly like, if not better than Kevin Gossman last yeah, he, year right being, now, stepping he's up. He's being picked up by by some other guys, which is he's, good. He's being picked up by Bassett's last start was incredible. Kikuchi has looked unbelievable. Uh, who else? Who am I missing here? Barrios. Is good. Barrios. Then- like, everyone, like, Gossman struggling is fine <laughs> because you're getting picked up by the rotation that's supposed to be one of the best in baseball. So uh, I'm not worried with Kevin Gossman. I don't think I ever really will be because I know how good he is. Um, and his no, track not, record. Not when the velo is fine. Yes. Other if the velo was, if the velo on Friday was what it was like when he faced the Yankees, uh, then we would have had problems. Then I would have been like, something is wrong with Gossman. Here. And I'm not, I'm not ready to make an ex- this excuse for him. This is what. Probably how many outings he'd get in spring training now. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's silver lining. We can try and find some excuses for Kevin Gosman with how how talented we know he is. And yeah. I'm I'm fine to think we're gonna get a bounce back. No. Problem. So let's go into Saturday. So uh and by the way, I forgot to tell the story. On Wednesday, me and Avery had to record. We missed a, a night out uh with the boys, like for some drinks and dinner that will re- I will regret till my co- till the end of time. Uh it was Vogelback, Ernie, Servan, Alto, Curtis, and obviously uh, Ernie's girlfriend who's a friend of ours. Uh went out for dinner Wednesday while we were recording. Yeah, that and, that's about the worst the yeah. worst thing I could ever see on my phone was just the boys getting together. It was like Ernie saying like dinner and I, and then we're like in the middle of recording and being like, yeah, and you're in Guelph and I'm in Georgetown. That... Yeah, you hate to see it. So I'm glad Alto and Curtis could be the Gate 14 uh, correspondents. Do you think they and, put uh, on? Do you think they put on well for us or no? Yeah, I think they're a good representation of us. <laughs> I think they're a good representation of us. But uh, yeah, that was crazy. Uh, but let's go into Saturday's game. Before we go into the Saturday game, I wanted to talk about Manoa's appearance in Buffalo. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of mixed reviews or. A lot of people kind of coming at him saying he's done and all that. Listen, I am not saying Alec Madoa will ever be back. I don't know if that will ever be the case. 
he's still doing his spring training starts type of stuff. He's doing a spring training in AAA in Buffalo in the worst temperature. Yesterday was terrible. Um, so I'm going to give him a pass on that start. Not great, obviously. Uh, ERA up to 10, I believe, in AAA area, 10-8. But the velo was there. And a lot of people that did watch that start that reached out to me said that he did look a little bit better than he did in, obviously, that A start. But uh, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to seeing where Manoa is at this next appearance he has in Buffalo after having one under his belt in AAA. What in the world is the process for him getting back? Like, do you have – because he's not – he's not better than anyone in the rotation. No, 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 he's not. I, I don't know how there is a path for Alec Manoa to be on this team. <laughs> other than an injury. Or multi, I guess multiple injuries, right? Yeah. You, there's The trust with him is is out totally gone. Yes. Totally. It is not last season. Like, we are – we are we know what happened last season. We're into – the next season where those things kind of have continued. Yes. There hasn't been massive strides that have made people say, like, oh, he's back. Um, so I have no idea what the pathway to playing time for Alec Manoa is. I just it, don't because know. Because Bowden Francis is better as a log man than Alec Manoa. Yes. Because you want Alec Manoa to start. And I don't. No, like Alec Manoa out of the pen would look weird as fuck. He has broken my brain as to what to think about. Like totally, I have no clue what I would want to do with Alec Manoa. Literally none. And I don't know no. if the team knows what they would want to do with him. No, I, I don't think the team knows, Avery. I don't know. Uh, this team has tough decisions to make uh, for the, within the next couple of weeks here. I mean, actually, within the next couple of days. Uh, Swanee and Romano will be back, but we'll talk about that after the series. Let's go to the Saturday game. Yeah, can Dalton do- Varsho is starting to figure it out. Yes. He's pulling balls in the air, which is what something he did do at all this year, actually. If he did, it was a pop-up, right? He, he is. He was top three in infield fly ball percentage as of Friday, um, and that was that was the issue last year. The fly balls, he he hit fly balls. He pulled them last year. They weren't at an optimal launch to hit home runs, and a lot of them were popped up on the infield. That's that's what happened last year for him. So to start this season again, it was infield fly balls and the back-to-back days of home runs from him. And he looked, he looked great. He smashed that one, the grand slam. Oh, that ball was shot on. I was yeah. behind. I was sitting with Doc and Glenn when that happened. I was, like, in the on the third baseline. He just annihilated that. But the story of the day, folks, Yariel mother. Fucking Rodriguez, that dude rocks. Yeah. He rocks. Like, I will have the luxury of watching all three of his uh, innings from, like, a pretty good seat, and then I went up to the Corona Lounge. He looks incredible. His slider, I do not know how people hit it. The, it, it it's insane. Yeah, he he attacked righties and lefties really differently. Um, righties got a ton of sliders. Lefties didn't get as much. But he threw one to Ryan McMahon. I believe, uh, for one of the strikeouts, that was one of the better sliders I'd ever seen. He spins the shit out of that thing. It is a, it is a great pitch. He yes, he's more polished than Bowden Francis is at this point for both of them. Um, I was not ready to give up on Bowden. I thought it was kind of unfair. He gets a tough first start, um, a tough second start, and then the one that you think his is his bounce back start. He gets canned for the guy. But they paid Yariel. Like, that's what happened. They gave him a decent amount of money. And they're going to let him start. And uh, Yariel was awesome, man. That is That was really As really advertised, promising. man. Fastball was decent. Uh, Nick Pollock from Pitchers List. That's a great website for pitching. Just pitching stuff in general, if you want to know about pitchers. So many good advanced stats. He, he did a video, an overlay today. Uh, I retweeted on my account of him throwing fastballs from different arm angles. Yeah, well. I was about to say that. Over the top and from sidearm. Like, we saw a little bit when he gets into his windup. It's a little deceptive. We slow it down a little bit, change things up. I think he's going to be a fun guy. In his first inning, he punches the guy out. We had a fucking big old fist pump. Got oh, fired yeah. up. Oh, yeah. It's, and I was it's awesome reading- to watch pitching like that. Alec was the best at that, too, of just being fired up. Let's fucking go. 
because I was next, reading yeah. the comments uh, under the, the tweet, like, do we have a guy that's like a motherfucker that everyone hates facing? That's going to be Yariel Rodriguez. Like, he so. will make it known that he dog walked you if he dog walks you on the mound. And that's why I'm a, I'm a Y Rod guy. Uh, he looks like a legit crazy person on the mound. The veneers, uh, the, uh, the crazy person eyes. He is simply incredible. And I cannot wait for his next start. It's going to be probably in San Diego on Friday because of because of the off day. Yeah. Well, Gosman's going to go Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. So we'll be doing the Friday beer stream for that. It's back, by the way. Friday beers is back for that stream late night with the boys. But uh, I'm all at Yariel. Just he's in he all. He's awesome. He's fucking yeah. awesome, man. I, uh, I think we could have got some more length out of him. Like we will get length out of him at some point. Yeah. Um, And then Bowden had to come back in. He and I thought Bowen pitched pretty good too. He gave a backside double with the shift all the way on, and then a bloop single as well. Uh, it seems like uh, we need, need his confidence up. And I don't know what they're going to do with some of the bullpen decisions when all these people come back. That's that's going to be interesting and and sad. Hopefully not for some uh, gate fourteen guys who have who have been awesome to us. Yeah, and uh, I think can we, can, we do, can we do one more Varsho thing? What's up? I'm all for analytics. I love them. Guy goes back to back nukes. After being Should've started today, you fuck, you gotta play the guy. Like man. it's not like you need Kevin Kiermaier's bat in the lineup. Kevin like, Kiermaier got begging. Kevin Kiermaier got a single off the pitcher's foot today. Yeah, Colin Varsho could have bunted for that as well. Yeah, you you're in for Varsho for more years. Like it's that's got to be his start. I think. You, I agree. No, I'm a, on your a side. Guy, with that. A guy who's been struggling. The fans don't love him because they think Gabriel Moreno is the best player to ever get behind the plate, which I yes. disagree with. Yes. He fucking, he's been so, so good for two straight days, a couple great swings, and then you leave him out. That's shit. I don't think that's helping a guy that much. I, I Listen, the Varsho thing is weird, and I agree with that. At some point, this is what makes a good manager a good manager. When a guy who has been scuffling is slowly starting to figure it out and feel himself, you don't fucking sit the guy. I don't like, and I do not know what the analytics say for putting Kiermaier in the lineup over Varsho. Maybe Kiermaier is better against lefties than Varsho is. I'm not sure. But when Varsho is finally figuring it out, as it seems the last two days, and I'm not saying it was going to guarantee he's going to hit home run no. today, but. You got to just have some feel and put that guy back in the lineup, especially for his confidence. A guy who literally is needs confidence so bad because he has been struggling his entire career here as a hitter with the Blue Jays. He's, I just, I don't get the call. I don't get the move to start KK over Varsho. Varsho in this lineup, I think that would have been kind of the A lineup here. Yeah, Maybe Biggio. I, I'm there. I'm there with you. Kevin Kiermeyer isn't an upgrade over Varsho. They're and both... we love KK. It's just he's I'm, 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 he's here for he, one more year, man. He's he's older. Varsho, you have more invested into Dalton Varsho over a longer period of time. That's just a, a fact. He's under more team control and he's younger. Like that's and, the yeah, guy. KK, that's the and, guy you want getting hot over Kevin Kiermaier, in my opinion. Yes, yes. No, and, and, nothing wrong to Kevin Kiermaier. That's you'd rather Varsho figure things out and be the guy. Hickey's also been just like struggling at the plate. Like I, I don't get. I'm not sure. Maybe because uh, Varsho's a guy who doesn't need rest. He's young. Yeah. <laughs> like KK is a guy that would need rest. It just it was a weird situation when I saw the lineup today. I was very, uh, I was very confused on why Varsho wasn't starting after going back to back games with very competitive at bats, uh, hitting balls hard, and then you just sit him on the on the Sunday. I I don't get it. Especially yeah. knowing because he's going to start tomorrow against the Yankees because Gill's pitching a uh, high-velocity guy, and Kiermaier can't hit velocity at all. So I, I do not think Kiermaier will be playing tomorrow. But, um, yeah, it's just a very weird situation, Avery. Very weird. We, we're not the manager. We're not yeah. the analytics department. Uh, yeah, play, playing, I think you'd want him to be there. Anything else from that Saturday game? As no, I do have a comment, though, about the Corona Lounge. I think I hate it. You're not watching baseball there. That's why, like... I get you're trying to give people get people into the stadium, sure, but does it matter if they don't give a fuck about what's going on on the field? Like, yeah, because yeah, they're trying they're trying to make money, right? I get that. You're though, so but it's di like you're so different. 
than the 15, 20,000, 25,000 people who show up to that park. Yeah. You're in the, in the minority. I guess if of, you can get them in, you get them in, right? 100%. Yeah. Think about all the people you were with when you went to the Corona Lounge. Yeah. That's the target audience for those places. And you if you can get them in there, I guess, get them in there. Yeah. That's a good point, Avery. It's we're, just so, we're so different because we're there to watch baseball pretty much. Yeah. Because Sandy texted me. He's like, okay, come up and watch. I'm sitting on the dugout. I was like, I'm not going up there because yeah. I won't be able to pay attention. You weren't even tweeting from the Gate 14 account. You missed the, the Varsho home run that I tweeted. It was like 20 yeah. minutes late. Like you were, you're just doing other things there. Yeah. So it's there. It's a there for a reason. And if you're there to watch baseball, you can't hear anything. That's the main problem because they're playing music the whole time. Uh, it just, it, I don't know, man. It's like you're selling your soul for tickets for people that don't give a fuck about the product on the field. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's an old takes head for me. Uh, old head takes for me. I'm not sure, but just a weird place. A weird place. I do like, I like going out and like obviously being with the boys, talking to people and stuff, but it's just, uh, I don't know. When I was up there, I was like, I, I don't really like this. Like, I'd rather just go to my seat and sit alone, and watch this game, you know? Yeah, fair. Um, yeah. IKF put together some of the better swings I'd seen on Saturday. When you're down there and you can hear, hear the barrel, like how they, how hard they hit the ball, uh, two people, IKF, he hit the ball super hard. It didn't go anywhere because he doesn't have that much power. He barreled something out that was really good. And then Brenton Doyle hitting that ball was the furthest I'd ever seen live, probably. He's got tools. Who knows how he's going to put it together? Yeah. Um, but that that's an awesome way to watch. IKF. I've... IKF's last seven games. Uh, six of those at the Rogers Center. He is hitting 375 with a 625 slug and a 375 on base percentage. This guy... This homestand, I'm not saying he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, has looked incredible at the bottom of the lineup. And defensively, he's looked very good as well. Uh, I don't know, man. It's some of the – if he can – I'm not saying for him to keep this up, but if he can just be somewhere in the middle of when he's bad and good, like just like a consistently decent player, um, this is a massive guy to have at the bottom of that lineup. Yeah, they're gi- they are giving him a lot of at-bats. It's just how it is. And you need him to be better than he is going to be bad. Yeah. Not a hot take at all. So um it was nice, nice to see him like with the fans for the first time, him at the Rogers Center as a Blue Jay to play play pretty well. Um, especially after Ernie had kind of cooled down a little bit from uh the hot streak there, but then he yeah. goes to hit game. It was great. So I mean you, you just want everyone hitting well and it makes the decisions tougher when everyone hits well instead of having to worry about when everyone's shitty. So good we gotta that. talk about Yimmy Garcia. That guy that is like, I don't know. I'm just in my mind thinking of this bullpen once the big dogs come back. What do you do with Yimmy? You can't take him out of the setup or eight. Like, he's insane right now. He's throwing 99.5. He is, his off-speed stuff, ridiculous. His fastball, unhittable. And he has stepped in this role that Rom- Romano and Swanee were last year. And they're both injured, but they'll be back tomorrow. It is incredible watching Jimmy Garcia pitch. Yeah. 99-5 on the gun this motherfucker was sitting at. Through his hardest pitch ever this week. He, I think he's the eighth inning guy while Swanee gets back. Yeah. Uh, Romano gets his spot back right away. Um, I mean, they have a fucking light show for Jordan Romano. He's not yeah. coming in and not being the closer when he comes yeah. back. Uh, I think Swanee get, like, gets seven right now, and they work. However, they go and flip flop it. Mesa, decent outing. Uh, the velo was up a little bit. That was the main problem for him. Was how is he going to pitch throwing two miles an hour slower? And no, you were right, Jimmy Garcia, man. For being a reliever, to have consistent numbers is very hard. You pitch one inning and you get fifty appearances, two or three of those can just blow your numbers for a whole. Yeah, season. You, you're you're toast. So, like, I wasn't ready to give up on him at all. In no way. The fastball was so good two years ago, and things just changed. Like, the numbers weren't good last season for Jimmy Garcia. No. But way too talented. The spring, although we've told ourselves that we are done worrying about spring training numbers, like, that, that is not something we're going to do anymore. Uh, he, the velo was there as well. And it was Mitch who said he could throw, like, seven different pitches if he wanted to and be a starter. 
Insane. Imagine yes. Jimmy starting that bulk ass <laughs> lineman looking motherfucker on the mound. Yeah, he's starting. A, he is a big boy. Still, in my opinion, the worst walkout song on the Blue Jays. No, love it. I'm all in on it. We I were think... talking about this yesterday with Davis and Ernie. They both love it. Yeah, I know. I hate it. I think it's the worst one ever. I love it. I love it. But uh, another thing from that game that that uh, that look that was really good was uh, I do like what I am seeing out of some of these at-bats. Like Springer, I know his average isn't there. Looks pretty good. Like so, Takes pretty good swings on the ball. Um, Vladdy today was really good. A lot of hard-hit baseballs today, albeit in the ground, which is per usual, par on the course. <laughs> Bo Bichette's at-bats look better. Um, and this team right now is kind of winning games. They're 500 with their top dogs all hitting below like 220, right? Um, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But I guess we can go on a set. Before we go into today's game, let's talk about Saturday night. So, obviously, uh, day drinking, the 3 o'clock game is scary, and it's going to be scary in the summer when we go to the 3 o'clock games and then go out in the night. It's going to be very, very scary. I'm not looking forward to um, having to deal with that because I was in shambles. I literally didn't eat the entire day. Last me- meal, it was at 8 p.m. on the Friday, and well, I didn't. I went. That's to classic. Like, we went out for lunch as well, and he didn't have anything. I'm in a great spot that I don't need to be at the bars. Like, I, if my girlfriend's not going, it's like, okay. And I'm been drinking kind of all day. It's like, all right, I'll go home at ten, and I'm I'm good. So I know you had a much longer night than I did yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. So I, I, much I very much I very much enjoyed my Saturday. But our guys, uh, you were about to leave, and then Ernie and Davis texted the group chat that they were stopping by to say what's up to us. Yeah. Uh, what a bunch of lads. We met Ernie's boys. Absolute beauties. Yeah. One of them was wearing the Ernie Clement game worn Little League World Series jersey, the one that the Guardians wore when they went to play at uh, Williamsport. Um, just lads, just absolute legends. They got a new place, by the way, Davis and Ernie, which which is incredible. Of course, they're yeah. roommates. Yeah, yeah, the roommates uh, there, but it's just so cool. Davis is yoked, man. Like he wasn't really like this last year. He is massive. <laughs> he really I mean, yeah. is. I think that was the only thoughts we have every time we see him. He's like that guy's just strong. Strong yeah. as fuck. Yeah, you don't Ernie's, realize you're Ernie's always taller when we see him than he looks on TV. We were talking about this yesterday with Alto. Are they is Davis the most popular Blue Jay right now? He's very Jano is very popular as well. But I I think Schneid's we heard the reception. Yeah, it was I can't I can't believe it every time it comes out. Like he deserved it. The fans love David Schneider. It's they, insane. It is. It is he, quite. He literally. pinch hit in an, a a ten run game and got a standing O pretty much. Yeah, it, that was. It's nuts. bananas. It is great. We told him that too. He's like, they love you there. He's like, yeah. I know. Rocks. He's he just he's like, I know it rocks. It's incredible. <laughs> it is just it, it couldn't happen. I think to a better I think guy. Jano's just as popular. He's yeah, Jano him. too, because Jano's like a homegrown guy. So is davis right i mean they're both homegrown guys which makes sense but uh yeah it was funny and then ernie saying like literally ernie said he's like all the fans love me because of you guys that was a nice <laughs> little tire pump from the urn dog you love to hear that from our guy man. but uh what a legend nice to see those guys i texted him man. i was like thank you guys for stopping by didn't have to do that and then they just went on their merry way and went to bed and then ernie rolled out of bed and just went two for four today <laughs> just what As he it, does that's what the dog does that's what the dog does but Let's go into today's game, man. We got to talk about it. Jose Brios might win the Cy Young. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even trolling. 105 ERA through four starts. Insane stuff out of La Machina. Absolutely insane stuff. He is quality start, I believe, every single start. If not, he's missed one quality start. He is everything that we thought he was when the Jays had traded for him three years ago from the Twins. He might even be more than that. He is so fucking good, Avery. We talked about it with Chris Bassett in the offseason. Seabass talked about, I'm telling you, boys, I'm thinking Cy Young for Jose. He openly said that to us. Yeah. He talked about how good he looked in the spring. And CB knows ball. I mean, he was dead spot on. He looked incredible. Yeah, he's found a way to get left-handed batters out. And that that was the thing that had killed him for years. And it's the pitch usage, the sinker, and everything else is a lot different. Um so I don't know if that's something on his end. His stuff has always been fantastic. Yeah. It looks the best on TV. I'll say this every time. Jose Barrios' pitches look the best on TV than any other Blue Jays starter, I think. I agree. The, the sinker, you can see it. 
it moves like fucking this every single time. The two then, seamer. Yeah, is that what it is? The I thought two-seamer. it was a sinker. Yeah, two seam movement. You're right about that. Yeah, and then the slurve moves a ton as well and gets swing and miss. So when he gets hit, it's just like, how is this happening every time? When he struggled two years ago, how is he getting hit so hard? But he's found a way to get left handed batters out, and he has been everything this team has needed. Is he now three and zero? I believe. Yes, on the season. Um, so that's, a, that's an awesome start for him as well. The staff is great again, man. Like how it's going to be the same as last year. I fear the staff is going to be awesome. They're going to get a ton of people out and then it's, you got to scrap together runs. I wish it was easier to score. But runs. I think there is a fixer in terms of all oh, this team's not score runs. And he goes by the name of Justin Turner. He is a, handsome looking ginger fellow that has essentially saved this offense for me um in terms of me being miserable justin turner is hitting 386 with a 1095 on ops with a 481 on base percentage this guy is everything to me he is hitting 800 against lefties this year with a 2318 ops and a 1500 ob or uh, slugging percentage Justin Turner rocks <laughs> like he rocks Avery. If you're, if you're betting and you're betting with sports interaction, if you're not taking Justin Turner hits runs RBIs against a left-hander. Yes. It's just, you don't like money. It's 800 been... average <laughs> against lefties. He just gets up there and he flicks the ball wherever he wants. And he runs slow as fuck. And he gets doubles and he is awesome. He has the pine tar all over the back of his Jersey. He is like he is saving the team. What was it? Three RBIs today, three for four. Yeah. Just did whatever he wanted at the plate. Um it is. Yeah, that was crazy as well. I'm the Boston Red Sox not even re-signing him, man. What were you? What thinking? a screw up. And he's been traditionally lefties, it's lefties better than righties by a lot. Yeah. Last season, it was by a lot. Um, so whenever you see a lefty up there, Justin Turner's about to rake. I have I have a thought from yesterday's game. Uh, okay. To talk about the Vladdy going first to third. We have two Vladdy things. I forgot Friday night first base play that I want to touch on as well. Se- runners on second and third. I believe one out. I forget the inning. Infield in. Vladdy gets a ground ball to first base. You remember this play? Yes. And he goes. I think um, Elias Diaz was on third base, maybe. So he gets the ball, he's in front of the cut. So he's on the turf, but close enough to first base. He gets a hard hit ball to him, and his, I think there were so many better plays than what he did, because he ends up going, running towards the plate, cutting up, uh, and then tagging him out at third base. The runners stay, it is good. I thought he could have ran the batter, the batter runner, whoever hit it to him, run him back to the plate. You remember the Javi Baez play where, he runs back yeah. and the runner at third score. Yeah. Run that guy back to the plate. Like you have a force tag there and your eyes are up at least to see the guy on third base. So it's just like, what are we doing there? I thought he could have even tagged first and been able to still throw him out with a slow runner on third. So that yeah. was the one play where I was gotten out. You got the lead runner out without scoring a run. So in the end, you're not worried about that. But I was, I was just like, why, why did we do that play? And then the first and third yesterday, yeah, Two that was outs. a weird one. Bo Bichette, backside hit, I believe. Um, it is a three and two count with two outs. So Vladdy's running. And the first baseman is back. He's not even back pocket, uh, which is usually what some people would play, three, two. So Vladdy is still kind of in the same spot, gets a slow lead, and he rounds second base. It's it's like he was the first grader run. He runs straight to first, and then the worst turn I'd ever seen, and he gets thrown out at third. I was just like, some little a couple attention. boneheads, a couple bonehead plays from and Vlad. I I hate being this kind of Vladdy because I don't want to keep harping on it because everyone else on the internet does it for him. Yeah. Um but those were two kind of like in-depth plays where I was like, You're you're bet Vladdy is a smart baseball player. He is better than that. Um and he's just like he turned it like shit and the play at first. I was like, ah. The play at first was weird. He's gotta help him he's gotta help himself. In the play at first was a rushed play. Like uh, a very anxious, let me get an out. Don't worry about like thinking play. 
uh, yeah. when he had a pretty decent amount of time. I know I thought there was a about. great chance two outs were on the board on that play, but uh, I don't. I'm going to. I am chirping him there, but. Yeah, just got to be the, better. The talent's there. That's the only reason we're on him as much is he can be the best player. In I agree. I agree. I agree. But other than that, though, man, uh, Nasty Nate. Wow. Wow. Uh, you want to talk about a revival of a career. Nasty Nate is starting to figure it out, figure it out as the out of the pen and has you wondering this four headed, five headed monster this bullpen's gonna have. Chad Green, Jimmy Garcia, Jordan Romano, Eric Swanson, Nate Pearson. You gotta think Mesa figures it out too. Yes. Like that's special. And you forgot. I think Trevor Richards is a really good reliever. Yeah. And but he's not a late inning guy, though. Sure. And you have Bowden France. Where's a bad really? Is Genesis Cabrera the worst reliever in that? I don't even know if you can have all these guys in the bullpen. Is he yeah. the worst arm in that bullpen when it's at full health? I think so. And that's the guy so. who throws 96 from the left side. Uh, I think so. I, I think Henny would be the worst. Uh, what, what is the worst reliever in this bullpen right now? Yeah, and he's... I mean, he has an 11 ERA as well, so it's not like... Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. It's um, early for him, but that's... Nate looked really good. We saw 102. Wasn't even yeah. close. Wasn't close to the strike zone, but no. we saw 102 today from him. I'm interested to see what the team's going to do with who they part with and who goes down because there is four optionable relievers in the bullpen. Mitch isn't optionable. Uh, Nate is. Nate has one more option. Nate, Tim Meza, Cabrera, and Bowden are the four that are optionable. And you have two relievers coming back. And Manoa on the cusp of something. I don't know what they're going to do with him. I think he stays in. Like, they just keep letting him rip in AAA. Do you think it's funny seeing Manoa in the dugout? Yeah, especially when he pitched in AAA yesterday. Because you see Swanee there, you see Romano there, you know they're coming back. It yes. almost feels like it's it's not a rehab stint for for Alec Manoa. It's uh we need you to figure it out in AAA type thing. Yeah, and then we need to see you figure it out for like a maybe a month, three starts. And it's and he's not like Yariel is insane too. And you're not taking anyone else who's in that rotation out. Like I I just don't know what you do with Manoa. I really don't. Yeah, like I said before, he's. It's good he, to have. It's good to have depth, I guess. If an injury happens, like you can call Manoa up, right? right. But, yeah. um, I have him like eighth on the depth chart. <laughs> he is. He's broken me, man. I'm, like, I'm, I have him eighth on the depth chart. I really do. Okay, there it is. Like, I, I think he is behind Bowden. I think he is behind Yariel. I think he is. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe seventh. Seventh or eighth? Yeah, I don't know where I'm out with Manoa. Do you have him he... over? Do you have him over Ricky T? No. There's number eight, brother. Yeah, but uh, just a weird, weird situation with Alec Manoa. Very weird. Uh, but other than that, though, good series, man. You got to win these series. Back to 500. Tough, tough series today. Uh, going in, or going into this week, facing the Yankees. Listen, we chirp them all the time. We say they're frauds. The Yankees, all that. Man. I hate him so much. And, and at the end of the day, this team is 13 or 12 and four, right? Like they're a good baseball team. There's yeah. just no denying it. Like they, they, they're a good baseball team, a team that has Aaron judge and uh, Juan Soto. I'm not going to discredit how good the baseball team is. So uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on this series? I, I don't know where I'm like, at with it. I'd, I'd plan the parade with a series win. Honestly, me like, too. A series win would be huge. One like, in... Let's go on the pitching matchups here. Uh, we got Gill versus Bassett, Stroman, Kikuchi, Schmidt, Gossman. But I think the second one is actually Rodon, Kikuchi. I thought Rodon was pitching, yeah. Yeah, it's Rodon, Kikuchi. Um, and then Schmidt, Gossman. Well, Again, Stro you got three Stroman... good pitchers going for this team. I thought Stroman would pitch the series. I thought he'd be third. Yeah, that's what this says in this app. I'm not sure. Dog but shit. either way, though, uh, the Jays got three of their big dogs going. Besides Jose, not named Jose Barrios. 
Uh, Kevin Gossman, how awesome would that be for a bounce back start on Wednesday against the Yankees at home before a road trip? Uh, need that, need that shit bad. Yeah. But um, can't get can't get swept. Can't, can't get swept. Can't get swept. Can't get swept. One I think th- tomorrow they win, Avery. I really do. Okay, one and one and mound. two. I'm not. I'm not thinking any differently of this team if they go one and two. Me two neither. and one, great series win. Um, and then you go on to San Diego with some decently favorable pitching matchups in that one. Uh, like I'll take most of our starters over anyone. There's the matchups over a series seem to go in our favor. Well, you got to think next series it'll be Yariel Barrios uh, Bassett. Relic. Pretty good. Fucking right. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, Matt Waldron's going to be one of the pitchers for the Padres. So we'll get to see a knuck. Watching a Vladdy try to hit a knuckleball might be scenes. It will be scenes. Yeah. It and, will be scenes. Oh, my God. What a play that was. What a play. Cronworth. Uh, but, yeah, that's the thing. It's like this Yankee series, a series win would be massive because you even up the season series, which is good because your your record, at the, if there's a tiebreaker, tie goes for the AL East opponent type of thing, right? Uh, I want a series win. I'm not going to say a must series win. No. We're not going to get there yet, but you got to set the tone tomorrow with our guy Seabass on the mound who has figured it out on the mound. If you looked at his last start against the Mariners, we need a series win here. Go get the fucking job done. Beat the Yankees who look great because I do not want to have to deal with Yankee fans doing that Vlad video. This is my house. And then them saying it's their house. You know, I'm not looking forward to that. So, just do it for the Twitter. Do it for us on Twitter that have to deal with Yankee fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's about us. It's not about you guys on, on yes. the field. It's about uh, us. Okay. You want to go into some questions here? We got a, got a lot again. I'll but you said this. what you said in 1-2 series? 1-2, and two, I'm ha- can't get swept. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Can't get swept. And, and last thing I want to talk about, Alejandro Kirk, where are you at with him? Before we go into the listener questions. Uh, today, it felt like he realized Jano was coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Need Jano back. That's all I'll say. Like, I'm where am I at with Kirk? He hits balls. He, no, he gr- doesn't hit. <laughs> he hits balls into the ground and he's he's not running that fast right now. He's like the law. The exit velos have never been crazy high. So you have to hit liners at a perfect angle to yeah. get them over the infield in in front of the outfield. Um, and the other way, his two swings today were both oppo oppo singles. He is so valuable behind the plate. And do you want to say a guy's overworked? Uh, three two weeks, weeks into the year, I'm not going to say that. I don't think you can say that either. So no. I'm not giving up on Kirk. He is he's getting ripped apart on the internet. I'm not ready to do that yet. He's so Rightfully valuable, so, brother. Rightfully, what so. happened to their baseball used to be where catchers just couldn't fucking hit. In like, even the way he's going right Buster now, Buster Posey it, broke our brain. <laughs> yeah, they're having good hitting catchers was not that important of a thing for a while because he managed that. Martin Maldonado played for the Astros he battles last year. Like that's yeah. that's what he was. I don't even think he was good at throwing people out, and I don't think he was good at framing. He, he just battles, hand, though. he just handled the staff well, and they let him go. So that shows you how some teams think. It sucks the way he hits because he hits up in the order. Like if he was going to hit eighth and we had a lineup that was that good where you could put Kirk in the eighth spot, yeah. then we'd be talking differently. But he was hitting fourth. He was hitting fifth. He's hitting sixth. It's yeah, it's important at bats that he's just grounding into double plays. And I'm I'm not ready to give up on him, but that's just how things have gone. You? Yeah, I'm the same boat as you. I don't know. It's weird, but his best at bats suck to watch. Fucking terrible to watch right now. Really bad. All right. Um, can Justin Turner keep up this level of play all season? No, well, you know, not this, not exactly. 1200 OPS leading the league in every offensive category, obviously. Yes. Uh, but something in the close to this for sure. He has shown no, uh, he has shown no decline. Like he has shown no, um, yeah, he's shown like no way of slowing down. Last year was one of the best years he had in his career. Uh, and I like betting on a guy that had a, uh, like that. And he, sh- I love the way he approaches that bat. I love everything about Justin Turner, especially the fact that he tries to run, which is electric. Yeah, that's that stolen base attempt today. He got a great jump on that. 
Yeah. And, uh, they didn't have the damn uh, replay system. He would have been safe, sadly. Yep. Uh, what would Manoa have to show you to earn a start after seeing Yariel Cook? Manoa is going to have to go back to Cy Young votes Manoa to, for me to think that he's gone. <laughs> I don't know how you beat Yariel right now. No, he did. Yariel just looks solid, man. There's, like, he's going to get hit hard. The slider, it got, he got some hits off of it, but yeah, he was, he was super solid, man. The yeah. upside is higher with Alec Manoa. Let's not get that twisted, but we haven't seen close to upside from Alec Manoa for a and year since Nom. Yeah. Yeah. Like Manoa's going to have to, for me, in triple A, have a sub three ERA for like a month at least. <laughs> For me to be like, all right, now this guy's starting to figure it out. Not a 10. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I think you're right. If Springer, Vlad, and Bo continue to stay cold, do you think they'll change up the top three in the batting order? No way. No. No. I think um, that's locked in forever, folks. Brios, ace conversation. What's up with Gosman? We touched on that. Uh, who do we drop with Romano Swanson coming back? Pearson has been a, unreal, so that's a tough sell. Yeah, do you think they they think about sending Nate down? I don't think it's going to be Nate. Yeah, I don't think it would be Nate either. He's been. I hate to say it, but I think there's a potential parting with Mitch White here. Um, what do you think the City Connect jerseys are going to be like? Um, and what do you want to see from them? <laughs> uh, I want to see. I want to see the City Connects be. I personally would have liked black, like the good old, like the old black jerseys they had. But I wouldn't be mad with a rendition of like a navy. I, I don't know what I would want, because the Philly just no CN Tower on it, man. Do you like the Philly ones? They're okay, I guess. I I don't think they're that sick. Like it's something. From what okay. all the city connects are, they're gonna if they're colored, which we, you and I, know to be their color. They're not white, right? Yeah, they're going and they're going to have the same color as as the pants. So. We're going to have probably a dark jersey and dark pants. Yeah. I, I don't know what you can do. I would almost think navy with the baby blue would look kind of cool, kind of reverse. For sure. If you reverse the other ones, but that seems bland compared to what all the other teams have been doing. So I can't, I can't even imagine. Uh, another note, what has happened to Joey Votto? No, not sure. We should do a Joey Votto update every week on this pod. <laughs> is Joey Votto back? I don't know what the fuck this guy is doing. I really don't. You think he it's, stepped it's, on a, a metal bat? Or, like, what could he possibly have done? He stepped on that, like, Harvey Quinn bat or Harley Quinn bat that's, like, just full of fucking spikes. Is that what he stepped on? I don't know. I'm not sure. But he's, like, not even a thought now for me. Yeah. I have to... <laughs> like, when, he's not when, even a thought. When someone brings him up, uh, it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe he still hasn't played a game yet. It blows my fucking mind, Avery. <laughs> But how would it you blows my mind? There's no at bats for him. We've seen with Vogelback. There's no at bats for those guys. Like in yeah, that, because of how good Justin Turner's playing, and them not playing him at third base anymore. Yes, uh, I agree. There's no at bats for him. Yeah, I'll go into some of the tweets here. Kevin God, why shouldn't I believe Nate Pearson is the greatest pitcher to ever? You live should currently? believe it. That that motherfucker's back. Yeah. Uh, who's your favorite Yankee of all time? From YJ's. Uh if you cared uh, about the if you cared about the Blue Jays, your answer would be Don Mattingly. Yeah, Don Mattingly. <laughs> um, is this the most eight and eight team ever? No. This team should be like based off of their performance, they should be way worse than eight and eight. We should be happy we're eight and eight right now. Wait until they kick it in gear. Yeah. True. I'm excited Wait to watch these motherfuckers kick it in gear. I am very excited for late night baseball again. Yeah. The, Do the Dodgers series is one of the most memorable ones from last season. And that was midweek late night games. That yeah. was awesome. So I'm excited for some of the weekend ones. Yeah. Uh, Jade's retro said, when you think about it, was Friday actually the best game of the series? Probably because of the <laughs> memories we made along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does Jake Berger make this offense elite? Jake Berger bangs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I saw it up close and personal when he hit a home run off me. Like, he fucking bangs. He launches home runs. He doesn't give a shit about an average. It rocks. Yeah. Uh, Seth asked if we're mad at him. No. No, I love Seth. you, Seth. Um, 
do you think teams are figuring out Gosman? Not to overreact, overreact to two stars, but we've seen teams game plan before to spit on breaking stuff. I don't I'm know. Not if sure. Like how how they not figure it out last year if they're figuring it out? Yeah, is, is kind of. I don't know. I think that. the forearm thing you brought up uh, makes a pretty good amount of sense. There has to be some tips when there's no runners on as yeah. well. Um. All right. Do you think the fact that batters can't give run support on good pitching and good bats can't be? Holy shit! I am not. That has broken my brain right there. Uh, he says, "I know a series win is a series win." And you can't win every game. Does this series still feel like a letdown because we probably should have swept? No. No. Not, not to me. Baseball is uh, baseball. Cal Raleigh's son or Ryan Mountcastle daughter? Oh, my God. Uh, Ka- Ryan Mountcastle daughter, I think. Uh, I'm Ryan Mountcastle daughter as well. Who's our favorite player on every AL East team other than the Blue Jays? Not doing that. Don't care. Fuck the other eight. Fuck the L East. Tyler O'Neill rocks. I'll just yes. say it again. Tyler uh, O'Neill rocks. That's a guy Avery's been pushing for. Yeah. I'm not I'm not victory lapping. He's a good player before. Tyler O'Neill is a fun baseball player. That's, That's yeah. to watch. What is the yeah. best way to watch a Jays game? 200 level. Okay. I think sitting in my room watching the Jays is my favorite place. Yeah. To watch it. Uh all right. Someone asked if Jimmy should be the closer. Um, I, I think Romano's going to have that. When is the new merch dropping? Coming soon. We need to get a bank card, and we'll figure that this out. This week. They want to know week. if you found love at the Corona rooftop patio on Saturday. No. Um. Yeah, and then it's a lot of a lot of questions about Manoa as well. And someone asked if it's okay that they're still playing Pump It Up after a win. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Just don't do it around us. <laughs> someone asked if the Jays should try to acquire a real second baseman. I've been seeing a lot of good play from 2v1. Everyone who's been playing second base. Yeah. I'm happy with where we're at on second base right now. Yeah. Like IKF looks good. 2v1 is simply incredible. Simply incredible. They're in a good spot right now. What can be done to protect Danny Jansen's hands? He already wears the guard. I don't know what else you could do. <laughs> we we need to do something to protect his hands, man. Oh, yeah. Dodgers. Yeah, we do. Uh the best way to protect it is by just having good luck at this point. He just has bad luck, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like he just has bad luck. That's like all I can really say. I like, I'm not quite sure what else you could do, but I'm praying we can get at least a fully healthy Jano the rest of the year because he is so good hitting 308 in AAA right now. Grand slam. He looks incredible. We need Danny Jansen back, dude. So bad, bro. And the final one, do we think we're missing a fuck you kind of guy? Guys who will just talk shit and show up. Uh, bats I kind of already answered that. I, I think Gary yells that guy. He's got a little bit of it in him. Um, I think when this team goes, there's a, there's a lot of guys who are like subdued, reserved guys, um, which are awesome when you talk to them. Just need some juice on the field that we love. Um, yeah. And that's all I got. And that's the uh, listener questions. For yeah. Today. And, uh, it's uh it's um it's just good to, I, so i got to take a step back and be like uh we're watching ball you know fuck did i miss it it's good to watch ball it's good to go to games uh don't pass it up it's it, it's i think the games are going to be pretty cheap this year man i really do like pretty cost efficient for some people you know yeah, i think it's going to take them a month or two to for that to change yes but, but uh, uh the prices were pretty Pretty crazy. Once the weather gets better, though, I think the the stadium will start being a little more busy. It didn't look that busy for me. Uh, it was Friday yeah. wasn't busy. Saturday I it didn't was think definitely not busy. But it was the Rockies. Yeah. You know, the yes. Mariners series was a little bit better. I think and Sunday wasn't really busy either. Yeah. But uh, anyways, let's have ourselves a week. It's Hell Week, Yankee Week, Yankees Padres electric back to back series. By the way, that yeah. rocks. Um, we should have, any- we should have planned to go to San Diego. That was, yeah, that would have been sick. That. Would have been sick. Uh, but anyways, love you guys. Stay tuned for some merch dropping this week. Hopefully by the end of the week, man, we try to get that bank card and then we can <laughs> put it towards the account, um, and go from there. But gate 14 forever. Let's have ourselves a great week. Another week of ball. And let's let's keep it between the lines here on Twitter between Yankee fans. Let let's uh let, the, let them be the scumbags this let week. Let them be the scumbags. All right. Love you guys. 
and uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe. Thank you everything for the, thank you everyone for the support. We ain't done yet. Let's have ourselves a year. We're back to 500. Now we go. Eight fourteen forever.